Thank you so much for coming on today. So Aram, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, is the author of Zellage. And we're going to talk a little bit about what Zellage is and about um, what it's like to maintain an open source application that's being used so widely and all of his process around that. So Aram, I'll let you describe what Zellage is as I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> I might as well I might as well let the, the author speak for that. Okay, wow, big responsibility. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey there. Um, so uh, I call Zellage a terminal workspace. Um, uh, some people also call it terminal multiplexer, uh, which is kind of like uh, for people familiar with Screen or Tmux, it's kind of in that same family. Essentially what it does is if you're using the terminal, it allows you to open multiple panes in the terminal, multiple tabs um, to kind of customize your workspace and uh, configure it and script things around. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the basics. It's if I have to sum it up into uh, like just a few <laughs> sentences. That's awesome. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I've been using Tmux for a while. I haven't had, I only just heard of Zellage recently through the team at Charm. So like they're, mm. they're huge fans of the Zellage and uh, I'm definitely excited to try, to try it more. And so for somebody who's got more of like a, a background coming from Tmux, what would you say is the selling feature of using Zellage versus uh, Tmux? I think I'm going to start with a bit of a disclaimer first, because okay. um, I um, very consciously try to avoid this comparison. Okay. It's not that they're, they're like, it's a totally legit comparison uh, uh, for sure, but I don't want to compete with another app. I want mm -hmm. to create an awesome app on its own that people will want to use. And mm -hmm. if it has uh, features you like, use it. Otherwise, use the other thing, uh, like uh, whatever works for you. That being said, uh, Zellage is geared to, I guess, two kinds of users. First, users very much uh, not familiar with terminals or terminal multiplexers who just want an environment that works for them and they don't have to configure it too mm. much. Uh, so doing the basic stuff of opening the app, finding out how it works. We're very much putting emphasis on the discoverability part. So we have the app itself tells you how to use it and you don't need to look at cheat sheets or anything of that sort. If you want just that, then we, we can give you a very good experience. And on the other hand, if you're a more advanced user and want to um, uh, kind of let your terminal give you superpowers, then we're also gearing towards that. Zellage has some really cool features that I like that are, some of them are possible with Tmux, but even those who are possible with Tmux are like, you'd have to kind of grind a lot in order to, 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 to get Tmux to do it. My favorite, for example, is floating panes. We can have multiple floating panes that can be toggled on and off. You can move them with a mouse, just you click, uh, you would be able to normal panes on your operating system. Another cool feature is being able to edit your scroll back with your default editor. So I'm a Vim user. And like with Tmux, for example, there is Tmux has a copy mode that you can like do, if I'm not mistaken, it's control B uh, square bracket. Okay. And then you get into like a Vim like mode and you can like move with HJKL and search for stuff. So we give you that experience, but with your Vim or your Emacs or your Helix or whatever you want, uh, just the pain like kind of switches over and you get Vim open with your scroll back and do with it whatever you want. Nice. Yeah. So this like uh, two example, there's like a bunch of features that, um, yeah, I think pretty cool. What inspired you to build this project? So I build this project like many open source projects. It comes, uh, comes out of a, like a need. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, I'm a Vim user. I've been using it for a while, uh, did, despite all my teammates like constantly trying to convince me to try all the uh, fancy builds and whistles editors. But I always find myself coming back to, uh, to Vim. And like yeah. most Vim users, uh, or not just Vim users, like people who generally prefer the terminal for development, we kind of find ourselves building uh, like an environment around our editor. I, I guess you mentioned that specifically because you've been a team Tmux user, so that's kind mm -hmm. of the environment that you build. If, if you want to edit more than one file at a time and have a shell, for example. Yeah. And so I did that for a while. I think I started out with screen uh, because I'm old mm -hmm. um, and uh, then uh, um, moved over to Tmux. I even tried a little bit to do the i3 thing with like my um, uh, whole uh, tiling window manager being my IDE. Um, but then I, I, I like kind of find myself maintaining this 
very large and growing uh, soup of bash scripts in order to get things done. Like you have your file manager open in one terminal on the left and you want every time you uh, uh, like uh, pick a file for it to open a Vim window um, uh, in a certain place on your desktop, uh, depending on the file and stuff like that. And then it's like, okay, so this is a yeah. bash script. And I, yeah, so um, that worked, it was nice, but like, moving to a different machine a or game. yeah sharing it with other people not fun uh so yeah i wanted to build zellage as a system to allow uh developers to like basically configure this environment in a configuration file nice so like a more controlled environment so it's less like less hard to break <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, less, okay. less easy to break <laughs> Less easy, yes. Harder to break. Harder to break. Yeah, exactly. And and also share with people. Um, like in the recent release, we added oh. uh, um, uh, layouts um, uh, or like improved layout system that we had. So uh, um, like uh, um, a layout, basically just a we, on terminology, uh, um, uh, basically a configuration file that defines uh, which panes are open, uh, uh, what's running in each uh, in each pane and each tab, and you can load that file into a Zellish session, and magically you have your environment ready. I think these can be very cool to share with other people in dot file repositories to have them in the root of projects. For example, like if you're a terminal editor person load this and uh, uh, you have the environment. It can describe the project structure, like group files together uh, that uh, make sense to uh, like be edited together, uh, uh, tell you how to run the tests, um, how to build the end-to-end -end, uh, test environment. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, and yeah, and you can just like send this as a configuration file to whoever, as long as they're running Zellage. Interesting, yeah. that's very cool. And uh, I'm also very curious, so I know, I know you have some demos for us, but one more question before we get into that is, um, where are you hoping to take this project? Do you feel like it's pretty close to like complete where this is where you, you feel you've kind of, uh, you've gotten close to, the, to your goal when you initially set out to build it? Or what do you see in the future for Zellage? Um, hmm. So... Loaded I guess there are, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and there are, um, I guess, kind of three ways I can answer this question, which kind of uh, two of them go into the, the types of users that we have that I mentioned earlier. First, for beginner users, people who maybe just uh, are, are starting to learn either to program or to work in an uh, to work in an ops environment. I want them to have a welcoming environment. I want terminals to stop being something that people are scared of. I think we're doing a good job there. I want to do a better job. I want Zellage to be known as like if you uh, if you're not sure how to use your term terminal run Zillage it'll help mm -hmm. you out uh, the, for the first steps then for advanced users looking at the terminal I think most of the time when we're using terminals we just kind of just use one line we have uh, we have the command that we're typing and the rest is a scroll back or like uh, I don't know if you have all those cool charm apps that you have then you may maybe you have like a more full screen experience but that's kind of limited to the app that you're running knowing how to use a shell well feels like having superpowers it's so true. Yeah, right? So uh, I think mm -hmm. what, but the shell is like kind of just this one line that we're using and the rest is scroll back. So we have all this, mm -hmm. like all the rest of this terminal here that uh, we can use in order to like uh, have our superpowers as well. In Zellage right now, it's possible to type a command on the command line and have it opened in a separate pane. I, I think I can show that in the demo. Um, mm -hmm. um, recently got a suggestion on Reddit. Someone suggested that uh, how about uh, when we we close that pane, we can pipe its output to the command that opened it. If you add to that an ability to also pipe stuff into that pane, if you imagine a shell pop pipeline like this, pipe this, grep this, uh, um, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I think it can be cool to imagine it as a uh, visual workflow. Like mm -hmm. open this pane, pipe its output into this pane, then into this pane. If you get an error, pipe it into this pane, otherwise into this pane. 
stuff like that. <laughs> you're still in your shell, ty typing your commands, but you're kind of using all of this space in order to like uh, do this magic as well. This is a, a direction that I want to take uh, Zelich for advanced users to be able to use the rest of the terminal uh, to uh, extend your superpowers. I promised three, so these were two. And the last one is I kind of want to blur the line between a terminal application and the terminal itself. Because I think in the context of terminal, it's kind of it's kind of an artificial separation. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a WebAssembly plugin system that uh, allows people to write plugins in like any compiled language. I want to take existing components of software, like even UI components, mm -hmm. and make them part of my environment, like without having to write code. Uh, like have them as plugins for Zellage and say like this slider, show this when I go into this directory, show that when I go into another directory. I like all of those ideas and I like how, how much you've thought about it. Mm -hmm. Like you've obviously put a lot of thought into, you know, the future of Zellage and who your target audience is mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. So that that's incredible. You want to show us, you want to show us some, some demos? You start up Zellage, you like a normal terminal, get into the, your uh, like shell prompt. So I'm a Rust person, apologies. So uh, let's say I'll <laughs> like, uh, um, uh, run my tests with uh, a cargo test, which is the test project, so they do not exist. But then let's say I want to also run the project itself. I can do cargo uh, run and get the hello world. Uh, but then I kind of have to zoom between like everything. So a terminal multiplexer uh, like gives you the ability to open another pane here and do cargo run and here cargo mm -hmm. test. Um, mm -hmm. But then we go into like, uh, as I mentioned before, my favorite feature, let's say I can open a floating pane. I can do everything I can uh, here as well. I can move it around with a mouse. The thing is that since I can toggle it on and off, it like it, it, it's pretty appealing to like run my tests here, for example. Uh, just do the cargo test, mm -hmm. go back to my code, and uh, like bring the test back every every time I need them. Um, Zellage. And how do you get the floating pane? Uh, the floating pane. So if you see when I press Control P here, I go into um, pane mode. Um, oh, okay. uh, Zellage is modal, and then I do... Oh, and then you get a bunch of subcommands that you can mm -hmm. work with. Exactly, and I do W. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, and then it like toggles them on and off. Like, even if there is more than one, then it toggles everyone. Gotcha, um, and it's the same thing for the tabs and the sessions and mm -hmm. all of that. Yep. It's like there's there's a sub subcommands you can choose from. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, just making example. sure everyone's following along. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> right now, just me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm kind of like um, me, like those first Apple users who are like, well, this is obvious. Of course, you know how to use this. But uh, yeah, it, it's a fair <laughs> point. Um, it's okay. I'll just I'll just stop you and ask you <laughs> every, awesome. anytime that it's unclear. Awesome. <laughs> no worries. Um, about the pain, by the way, it can be uh, like once you kind of know the commands, uh, we also have a, a, like a layout where it uh, like takes up less space and doesn't show you uh, um, okay. uh, all, all the commands. So I, I know some people are very uh, protective of their terminals uh, space and that's totally legit. You can also like, uh, if you don't like these frames, for example, you can go like this and then you're like Tmux. Another cool feature that I liked, I mentioned that uh, I'm running the, uh, the test here. I can run the tests as uh, like what I like to call a first class citizen. So we have this okay. window here, and this window is not my shell. It's cargo tests. It's like a, um, a what's running my test. It's a command that exited. I can see its exit code here, and mm -hmm. I can press Enter to rerun it, uh, or Control C to exit. Uh, and then I like kind of keep it around, uh, toggle it on and off uh, when I'm working. So is ZRF is that the yeah is that's... that the, the the shortcut for mm -hmm. basically running it in a yeah. floating pane and have it just the process floating? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's an alias that comes with Zellage. You can add to your uh, uh, to like shell aliases if you want to or not, or like and if you don't add mm -hmm. to the uh, to the uh, shell aliases, then it's like Zellage run uh, whatever you want. Um, gotcha. Okay. Uh, ZRF is Zellage run floating. I can also have Zellage run uh, like not floating, and then it opens uh, uh, oh. like as a as a as, as a tiled pane. So the cool part that I wanted to show earlier is I'm going to throw a bit of like text onto the screen. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is like my uh, demesk. I never know how to pronounce it. How do you pronounce demesk? Demessage? De like, uh, I have no idea either. Yeah. I mispronounce most things though, yeah. so I don't know if I'm the person to ask. Okay, <laughs> demesk. Maybe, maybe someone can correct us. Uh, so I'm sure they will. Don't worry. <laughs> Good, I'm good sure the internet, they're, they're ready. Okay, good They'll to know. They'll correct our grammar, our pronunciation. Okay. Don't you worry. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> they got their um, pens out. Yeah. So uh, English not as a first language. So be gentle with me. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, so I threw uh, all the all this uh, um, like output to screen. So now um, I can open it with my editor. Like it's Control S and then E. Uh, and this is my mm -hmm. Vim. Um, let's like well, I'll full screen it here, so it'll be easier to uh, to look. And this like um, just like what you've seen here, the prompt and everything. Uh, I can use it to search uh, for errors, and mm -hmm. like I don't need to learn a new interface. I already know Vim, so I can do this. And yeah, the, and you can probably use all your plugins and stuff yeah, as well, right? Yeah, like yeah, all of exactly. your Vim plugins. Exactly. Uh, curious, is this is this basically like creating a, a temp file with the the dump exactly. from the terminal? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, if you wanted to save it, would you like you can just write write the file the way you normally would, or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the way um, you normally interact. Cool. Uh, like if I want to, uh, I can even you know edit it, do whatever I want. Like, uh, um, mm. like this example, the use case I have in mind is to like delete all the lines that uh, I don't know. I think it's G, all the lines not containing an error, and then I have all these errors, and I go on top, I place oh. errors, and uh, save it to temp my errors dot md and then email it to a friend you know just from from you showing uh, basically how you did the the cargo test and you were able to either run it in a in, in a floating pane or in a new mm. pane that would be super helpful for basically like recurring commands that you're just working yeah. with constantly right if you just want to mm. if you're constantly rerunning your project instead of having to type like for me go run or for you cargo run mm -hmm. the way i work is basically i open a uh, layout uh, it's a built-in layout that we have called strider mm -hmm. then we see on the left here we see strider which is uh, a plugin it's uh, um, like this one specifically is written in rust and compiled to WebAssembly. and uh, this mm -hmm. is how i work i i go here i open a few files that opens them as panes and then like I can go to, to each one of the files I can like expand it to look around whatever I want like I'm going to take this and pop it out uh, to a floating pane so I have a shell here and I can do what I want and sorry so how did you get the strider the, the strider thing open oh so you start zellage with zellage minus l strider and it just does it for you. Oh, gotcha. You mentioned earlier about like the recurring commands that you run with enter. Yeah. I, I prepared a layout here. So a new tab is, a, is, mm -hmm. is, is an alias of mine, that basically an alias for zellage action new tab. And okay. then I open uh, the test layout and the test layout allows me like this project uh, is divided in several, several crates and uh, each one of them has uh, their own tests. And I have one command to run all the tests, but it takes long and uh, like a lot of output and it's hard to know uh, what's going on. This layout will open panes for each one of the tests, each one of the uh, crates with their tests in a new tab as command panes. Here, like it opened a new tab for us. We see tab two above. And we have yeah. uh, uh, like all, all the tests running here. I can go to each one of them and uh, press enter to rerun it. If I... So you can run them all together like concurrently instead of having to wait for each and every one or like having to type it all out. Exactly. You know? um, yeah. Or run specifically. Nice. And uh, I can sync the tab with control T S. Um, we see mm -hmm. it's now synced above. And this means that every every keystroke that I send sends to each one of the panes. Um, Oh, interesting. So now I press enter and all of them run. That's very yeah. cool. The strider, that is basically like a, a file file tree, right? Like you can navigate through all of the files in your in your current working directory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of highlight that as like for people who are newer to working with terminals mm -hmm. and you want to try out Zellage, don't worry. Strider's got you. You yeah. can still see all your files. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> When we're flipping through the different panes, is there a way to basically, uh, if you have a pane selected, that you can kind of pop it open to f full screen and then move it back to this regular view? Yeah, for sure. So, for example, if you wanted to edit that, like source that lib.rs or something like that, and you wanted it to go full screen. Uh, yeah, you can do. Or like take up the entirety of the terminal. You can do Control P and F, and uh, there you have it. I, I guess you kind of find your flow uh, uh, within it as yeah. you go. <laughs> so. Yeah. As you use the app, you can just like uh, look at the uh, at the bar here below and kind of figure out uh, figure out what you can do. We're, we're, we try to make it like really really easy to, to discover all the different features, and for for the rest, we have uh, mm -hmm. like uh, I think pretty good uh, documentation online. Uh, that was pretty much all of the questions that I had for you. Is there anything else that you wanted to share just with uh, the audience? Uh, no, that was great. Thank you very much.